there are multiple ways that you can install the Postgres SQL database on a Mac. But I think the best way to install Postgres SQL on a Mac is to use a Docker container. And the reason um, I like this option is because by using a Docker container for your Postgres SQL database, you are isolating the changes to the Docker image. Therefore, you do not have to mess around with your Mac's local directory thereby maintaining consistency. So if you were to deploy your database or share it with a, a teammate, a coworker, your friend, whatever the situation may be, you can share the Docker image. As a matter of fact, the Postgres SQL team maintains and provides a Docker image for Postgres SQL. So when you're pulling down this Postgres SQL database uh, Docker image, you're, you're pulling it from the direct source, from the official Postgres SQL source itself. And if you've never used a Docker image before, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the process step by step. So what, what we're going to do is we're going to set up um, Docker desktop we're going to pull down the Postgres SQL database image. We're going to set it up. We're going to set it up in the command line so you can use the command line in your Mac terminal to create databases and manipulate uh, your databases. And I'm also going to recommend one client side graphical user interface tool that's free of charge that you can use to uh, to work with if you rather not use the uh, command line. Of course, when it comes to open source relational databases, you do have some options. But I'm starting to like PostgreSQL more and more every day, especially when compared to MySQL. If you do not have a Docker account as of yet go ahead and sign up for a free docker account and then download the docker desktop for your mac once you're done with that sign in sign in to the uh, docker desktop account which will also i believe sign you into the web account as well the web application as well for docker once you have successfully installed the Docker desktop on your Mac, it should look something like this. Make sure that you're signed in. As you can see here, I'm signing in to my Docker account and my Docker desktop. I went ahead and I removed uh, all the containers and images so that I can help you start from scratch. We will be needing the max terminal for this tutorial because we will be issuing a series of docker commands and then later on we will be we will be issuing some postgres sql command from the command line now i will explain what all the commands means and all the flags that goes with each command but if you want to have a deeper understanding uh, of what the Docker command means and all the flags that goes with it, have a look at this documentation. It really is wonderful documentation provided by Docker, uh, probably some of the best documentation in the industry. I will provide you with the link in the description of the video. The first command that we are going to issue in the max terminal is the docker pull command. I'm going to paste this in so that you don't have to watch me type, which is insanely boring, especially in this context. So docker pull is to pull down docker images. Postgres is the official name of the docker image for the Postgres 
database here. You know, let's bring in the Docker Hub here. So once you sign in, you will have access to this repository of the various publicly available Docker images. So if we were to search Postgres, okay, voila, this is the official Docker um, image for Postgres SQL. And it even shows you the command to pull down this package, okay? I've already checked for a Taylor Swift package, but there isn't one here. Just FYI. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. Now execute the command. All right. So it's pulling that down. So it's done pulling down the database to a local directory. And if we hover over images and click on images, it's collapsed. The cyborg is collapsed. But if you drag it out, Drag it out so you can see the images option there. Okay, so there's our images. Well, we have just one image, right? You can also check via the command line by issuing the command Docker images. And it'll sh uh, you can verify in the command line as well that the Postgres database has been successfully downloaded. Next, we are going to create a Docker volume. What is a Docker volume? Well, at a very high level, um, a volume is where the container will store and consume data. And in this case, we are going to call this volume Postgres, you guessed it, data. Now let's check in the sidebar here, volumes, yep, there's progress. Postgres data. Again, if you want a deeper a deeper dive into these commands, peruse the outstanding documentation that Docker provides us. From the command line, you can also issue the command docker volume ls and it will sh show what volumes available locally. If you're a seasoned Linux user, you're familiar with the LS command, with the LS flag. So now that we have the Docker image and we created the volume, let's go ahead and create the container itself. I'm going to explain what these flag means. Okay, so we are going to create a container called Postgres container. That is why I'm passing in the name flag. And then in this environment, which is the dash E flag, which for environment, we are going to require a password. Now this is uh, where I want you to enter the password, okay? Now, uh, make sure that you uh, enter the appropriate password in your private environment. But here, for the, for the purposes of this demo, let's uh, call it Taylor Swift, everybody's favorite princess of darkness, Taylor Swift. Yep, I invoke her name way too many times. And then the, the P flag is for the port, the default port is 5432 and then we're going to mount it on the volume the volume that we created earlier and then uh, the D flag is to run it in the background or detached okay that's that was successful as you can see there let's see here volumes container there's our container running okay now we can issue the command docker ps to check yep it's up and running okay it's as easy as that now 
I've been harping on the documentation a lot. We're going to visit the documentation page one more time. I promise this will be the last time. Now, to understand how these command works, so if you go down here, okay, you can see the, the various commands on here. And then if you click on, say, Docker run, it'll show you what each flags are for. Okay, the same thing with Docker. Let's say you want to know all the flags that are available for Docker execute command. Okay, those are all the flags available for Docker execute. Okay, so that's how you um, read the documentation for how the command works. Okay. So now that we have our database running in the background, let's go ahead and connect to it by ex by uh, issuing the execute command. Now I will, I will tell you uh, something here. This Postgres user that is the super user, the default super user for Postgres SQL. So we're gonna connect as that user. Um, modify that as appropriate in your local environment once you understand Postgres SQL a little bit better. Uh, this video is about setting up a Docker image for Postgres SQL, not for Postgres SQL itself. That might, if there's enough requests in the comments, I might do a Postgres tutorial. Okay, so now we're in. So now that everything is up and running, let's go ahead and create our first database just to make sure everything works like it's supposed to. Let's issue the command create database. Let's call it Taylor Swift DB. Okay, so that was successful. Let's issue the command list. There's the database there. One thing I do want to show to you guys in the Mac terminal is that once you are in the PostgreSQL interface in the terminal, if you want to clear what I found was on the Mac, you press Control, Control, not Command, Control, plus the letter L, the, the L keyboard, the letter L. It'll clear that out for you. And then to exit this interface, this connection from uh, PostgreSQL DB, you just type quit to get back to the terminal mode again. So when it comes to the client side, graphical user interface for PostgreSQL, you rather use the GUI instead of the command line. You have several options. The official one, I think, is PG Admin. It is massive. Okay, this is a steep learning curve, but, but I think it's pretty good. The other option <clears throat> is called D Beaver. D Beaver. Please don't send me any hate mail. That's what they call it. But uh, there's a free version of this. And I'm going to show you just real quick how to use the free version. Uh, just download the free version for the Mac. And I'll see you soon. So once you have DBeaver <coughs> GUI set up, okay, and you run it, you're going to be given an option of the different uh, DB technology that you want to use. Uh, of course, we're on PostgreSQL. Select that. It's going to ask you to authorize it to download the drivers. Go ahead and do so. And then, of course, uh, that'll be, be pre populated for us. Localhost um, port is 5432. Now, if you recall earlier, I created a database named Taylor Swift DB. That's the database that I want to connect to. Obviously, if you refuse to invoke the Princess of Darkness name, 
uh, you have to enter the appropriate database name there for uh, for yourself. Uh, if you also recall, <clears throat> I uh, also created a, a password called Taylor. Let me spell this correctly: T A Y Taylor Swift. Okay, save the password if you wish. Now test the connection. See, connection is good. It's connected. Click OK. Finish. And there we have it. I can I connected to this earlier off screen. So, anyhow, so we're connected uh, to Taylor Swift DB or whatever, uh, whatever you call yours. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and then from here, if you right click on the topmost level and you right click, you get the SQL editor. You open the SQL script there, and you're off to the races with your SQL command. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Let's see what else I have to, need to tell you. I will make sure to include all the links in the description for you. Um, I am going to come back and show you how to remove all of this in case you don't like PostgreSQL. Okay, I'll see you right. I'll see you soon. I did mention earlier in the video that Docker was was running. Uh, in detached mode uh, for us to stop that we can issue the command docker stop postgres container and it will stop running for us as you can see there on the left okay so let's say that in a parallel universe you love taylor swift but you hate postgres sql and you want to remove the images so what you can do is issue the docker remove Docker removes Postgres container uh, because that is the container that we named it. All right, so now the container is gone. And then you want to remove the image. What we can do is we can issue the command docker rmi because remove image Postgres. So that's deleted as well. Okay, and now let's re go ahead and remove the volume. Remember the volume, we call it Postgres data. And so remove Postgres data. That's remove as well. So we look in our GUI, everything is gone. Okay, everything except the memory of Taylor Swift, right? Oh, gosh. Uh, okay, so let's just do a docker images to make sure that everything's gone up oh, it's all gone let's do ob obviously if there's no images but let's just run the ls just ls command just for kicks no volume okay that's gone as well and obviously if that's gone then obviously docker ps won't do anything other than show us that everything's gone okay there so we did everything and then we reverse everything. Um, I would really appreciate it if you show me some love by subscribing to my channel if you're not a subscriber already and giving it the like. Okay, that's all for now. I'll see you next time.